You are about to hear another episode of The Deer Slayer, dramatized and directed by Charles Frederick Lindsley. Betty Hutter's mission to the Iroquois camp seems to have failed in its purpose to free her father and hurry Harry. She reads from her Bible to Rivenoak, the chief, but he is unimpressed. When the girl asks what he intends to do with his captives, he replies sullenly that they must die at sunset. And he also tells her that the Indians have built a raft and intend to attack and burn Muskrat Castle, where Deerslayer, Chingakook, and Judith are holding a council of war. The present episode opens at the castle where the three friends are facing a serious prospect. It is just after sunrise, and Deerslayer has gone to arouse the Delaware chief. I've brought you some white man's clothes, chief. Here, put them on. No need, Deerslayer. Iroquois not know Chingukuk on lake. But you can't remain concealed for long. It's again all prudence to be seen in your war dress and paint. Wash off all them fiery streaks from your cheeks. And put these garments on. And this hat. White man's clothes no good for Delaware chief. Listen, Chingakook. If the Mingos know you are here, Watawa will be in more danger. It's best to make the varmints on shore think that two white men are in the castle. Hmm. I change. Judith has some breakfast ready for us in the main cabin. Come in when you get civilized. Did you find it hard to persuade him, dear Slayer? He's a Delaware born, Judith. But when I used Watawa as an argument, he came around. He seems very fond of his Delaware girl. Is she pretty, dear Slayer? The best-looking maiden in the whole tribe. You should hear her voice and see her when she smiles. And do you say she was stolen by the Iroquois? Just plain kidnapped when she was away with her father and mother on a fishing trip. Do the Indians love their children? The red man has the same feelings we do. Yes, they love their children. And Chingakook loves his gal. That's why he's come to rescue her. Oh, this whole business is horrible. We must do something at once. Hetty will have no influence. She thought her Bible would convert the enemy, but she's probably a prisoner herself by this time. Did you tell your Delaware friend about the chest and the things we found? Uh, Not yet. But I have some of these elephant things in my pocket, and I'll show them to him when he comes. Here he is. (laughs) Well, Chingakook, the Mingos won't recognize you in that garb. Why, you look civilized as a Christian. My face is almost as brown as yours, and we could both pass as white men at a long distance. Yeah, sit down and eat while we make plans. Tell him about the chest, Judith. We've been trying to find things to buy Father's ransom, and we opened an old chest that he's always kept secret. We found some wonderful clothes embroidered with gold and lace, some handsome dresses, a pair of silver pistols, and some ivory elephants. I have some of them here, Chief. Take a look. I call them idols. Hmm... Look at his eyes, Judith. Mm. Did you ever see Indian greed before? Uh, I told you. Ah, good. Good. White animals buy a whole tribe of Iroquois. Yes, Leia. I hear steps on the platform outside. Someone is coming. Keep back. Let me see through the chink here. It's a mingo, Judith. I do believe the varmints have come off on a raft. Give me my rifle and keep in the corner. Chingakook, go in the next room. You mustn't be seen yet. It is an Indian. But Hetty is with him. Judy, dear player, don't be afraid. We're alone. We have no arms. We've a message from the Iroquois. Open the door, Judith, while I keep the savage covered. Don't fire, dear player. He's not armed, I tell you. Come in, Indian, and sit down. Hetty, are you safe? Tell us, did you go to the enemy camp? Did you see Father? What did the chief say? Yes, I saw Father. I did not stay with him long, though. I went at once to the chief Rivenoak. I read him texts from my Bible. What did he say? At first he said father and hurry were to be killed at sunset. Then he came later and said he was wrong. That what I had read from the good book was right. 
Then he put me on a raft and sent me with the Indian to the castle. Didn't I tell you, Judy, about the power of the Bible? If it were true, it would be a miracle. Let me talk a little with Hetty. Was this raft made after you reached the Indian camp, gal? Or was it ready-made? The raft was ready-made and in the water. Could that have been a miracle? Yes, an Indian miracle. You found the raft ready-made and waiting for its cargo, huh? It was as you say. The raft had been built. They put me on it and told this young man to row me off here. And the woods is full of the vagabonds waiting to know what's to be the upshot of the miracle. No, I comprehend the affair now. But let me keep my eyes on this young bloodsucker or he'll borrow a canoe without asking. Uh-huh, I see he has his eye on them elephants. He's been too busy studying them to notice much else since arriving here. Listen, Mingo. Forget them white elephants for a minute. I want to talk to you. Where t'other, pale brother? He sleeps. How did you know there was another? See him from shore. Iroquois got long eye. See beyond cloud. See bottom great spring. Can you tell me, boy, what your chief intends to do with their prisoners? Scalp. When? Tonight. Sunset. Why not take them to your wigwams? Wigwam full. Scalp sell high. Small scalp, much gold. That explains it. Now look here, lad. Those white men belong in this castle. See them white animals you've been admiring? You go back to your chief and say we will give him two of the ivory creatures as ransom. One for each scalp. Go back and tell him this, and bring me the answer before sunset. White man, let Injun take one animal? Show, chief? No, your chief would never see it. You can tell him all about it. Now get out. But bring me the answer before sunset. Court chief will come out to bargain with you, dear Slayer? No doubt of it. Did you see that young Indian's eyes glitter as he looked at those ivory elephants? Uh, the tale he'll tell to old Rivenoak will bring him out all right. You've been watching the show now for a long time. Do you see any sign of their leaving? Not yet. But well, I expect you any time now. Hetty, uh, Chingakook here is very anxious to get some information from you. He's not much of a talker. But I'm going out onto the platform with this spyglass and leave him alone with you. Tell him about his sweetheart. I'll call when the Redskins put out from the shore. Your name is Chingakook? Chingakook. You are the great serpent of the Delawares? Chingakook. That say great serpent. Deer slayer tongue. Chingakook. That's what Hist called it. Hist? You mean Watawa? Watawa or Histo Hist. I think Hist is prettier than Wa, so I call her Hist. Wah, wow, very sweet in Delaware ears. She sing like bird. You hear her sing? I did. What she sing most? How she look? Often she laugh? She sang Chingakook oftener than anything else. You, you have a message from her, Delaware. I'll tell it to you. I hope these logs haven't ears. His told me to say this. You mustn't trust the Iroquois. Then she says, there is a large bright star that comes over the hill about an hour after dark. And just as that star comes in sight, she will be on the point where I landed last night. And this, you must come for her in a canoe. Good. Chingakook, understand. And now let me tell you something for myself. When you marry Hist, you must be kind to her and smile on her. And not be cross as some of the chiefs are with their squaws. Always good to walk. Too tender to twist hard. Else she break. Go to Deerslayer now. Shh. Deerslayer, come. You're a boy who put off from the shore, chief. I want you to help me watch them. There's no telling what devilry they're up to. Where well, did you hear from Watawa? Wa meet me tonight when star come over hill. You help me rescue? That's what I came here for. This battle for Hutter is just an accident. Maybe I go myself. Give me strange beasts. Me take canoe. Dear Slater, the Iroquois are getting close. All right, gal. I don't like your plan, Delaware. Canoe you shan't have. Why put your forces in the enemy's hands before the battle's fought? But we'll talk more about this later. Let's tend to the business in hand. Come out and tell me what you think of the raft. 
I've been trying to see, Deerslayer, if they have any firearms. Well, I couldn't find any, but they might have some hidden in the hemlock brush they've laid across the logs. Anyway, there are only two of the enemy. They can't hurt us. Don't you think they should stop now? We can talk from here. Yes, you're right. All right, Mingos. Stop where you are. Are you chiefs? Or have the Mingos sent me warriors without names on this island? Oh, uh, my name Rivenel. Iroquois, chief. What's your island? Why do you come on logs that are not even dug out? Iroquois, no duck to walk on water. What pale face name? One of your warriors who started for the happy hunting grounds yesterday morning gave me the name of Hawkeye because my sight happened to be quicker than his. My brother Hawkeye, he sent message to Hurons. Say he had beast with two tails. Show them to Rivenel. Very well. Here, I'll toss you one. If it's not returned, this rifle will settle the point between us. Catch! <laughs> Do you think he'll return it, dear Slayer? Look at them and stare at it. They think it's an animal with two tails. It passes beyond anything they ever saw in these woods. Well, what do you say, Rivenoak? Has my pale-faced brother any more such beasts? Yes, but one's enough to buy 50 scouts. One of my prisoners, great warrior, tall as pine, strong as moose, other prisoner very wise. King of this lake. I know. But a beast with two tails is worth two such scalps. But my brother has another beast. He will give two for old father. No. It's beyond all reason. One beast is enough. Huh? Rivenoak will not trade with pale face. Two scalps worth more than one beast. Here. Take beast. We go back to shore. Oh, dear, sir. Oh, tell him you'll give him two. We don't want them. They're going back. Quick, tell him two. Not yet, Judith. I think that when he has reconsidered, he will... Dear, sir, be on your guard. I can see rifles underneath the hemlock brush. And the other Iroquois is loosening them with his feet. Oh! 